life's journey. You know, in life's journey, there are always two ways. And guess who it is that gets to choose? You. You can't blame anyone else for it. Bottom line is, you are the one that chooses. So you never can look around and say, well, if it hadn't have been for so and so. No, you made the choice. Now, the word journey, and really in a sense, in as much as we are strangers in this flesh age passing through, because your soul came from the Father, it journeys here, and it shall return. What kind of journey are you having? There are probably more scriptures on this particular journey or way or path than any other subject. But I just felt led today to do this in as much as we're coming up to that time in this great nation that decisions will be made. I want you to open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Proverbs. We'll be beginning there in a moment. First, I want you to know what the word in the Hebrew tongue, journey, is. It's D-E-R-E-K, spelled in the Hebrew. It is pronounced derek, derek. But it means a path. It means a well-trodden path. And that's what the word journey, uh, the etymology of it is. It was used had in military terms, terminology, and so forth, where by battles could go. But journey itself, derek, means a well-trodden path. Now, figuratively, it means a choice of, in life, or a, um, a road in life, if you choose, a, um, a course, perhaps better said, a course a line. And you're the one that chooses that line, that course, and um, from that you have, you either reap or you suffer. And in a sense, uh, many times we'll take the wrong path for a moment. Suppose that's good for us. Because you learn one thing always, if you've got this thing clicking, don't come this way next time. All right? This is bad. This is not good for you. And not only that, you gain the knowledge that you can share that experience to prevent someone else going that way. That's what experience, in large part for the Christian, should be utilized as for self as well as sharing if it's possible so that someone else doesn't hit the potholes, that you help them around that. Now, in opening, in... Um, Opening your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, we, um, one, first, you know, it just come to me, one of my favorite verses in this first chapter of Proverbs, let's go to it if we may, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, you want to know the prime root of wisdom, this is it. The fear, or I would rather transfer, translate the reverence of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I want to say that again. The reverence of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. And that's true. It's very true. They won't listen. You can't tell them anything. Why? They feel they know it already and they would prefer to cut their own path, cut their own swath. And unfortunately, what causes that pride in self, many times, people won't listen. Well, hey, it's all right. Let them find out, you know. And, of course, they will reap uh, their reward for that. Now, the reason we're coming with the subject of path in mind to this first chapter Skip with me, if you would, to verse 20, and let's absorb. Wisdom crieth without, she uttereth her voice in the streets. And a street is a way, it's, it's a place to journey. Wisdom is there to be gained from experiences. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. 
in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, and of course uh, she speaks very directly, How long, ye simple ones, will you love simplicity? Translate it foolishness, and you'll come out ahead. And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. And it would, that is true. Got to do it themselves, got to do it their way. I want this. And a fool will not listen. Well, you can have it, but it's going to burn you. Okay? 23. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. God's words are always guiding, instruction, knowledge, wisdom. Why? So that you can have peace of mind. So that you will be an asset to your community. So that you will be an asset to your family. That you can give good, solid, common sense advice. That you can decide a thing using wisdom rather than folly and come to a conclusion whereby people will not be hurt. Because when foolishness reigns, people hurt. 24. Because I have called and ye refused, I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. Wisdom will do that to you. Our Father will also. But ye have said at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. You wouldn't listen. Unfortunately, that's one of our main problems and our weaknesses. So many times we will not listen, especially in the process of the learning years. Verse 26, I also will laugh at your calamity. This is what wisdom says. I'm going to laugh at you in your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. And you expect sympathy from God? When the beginning of reverence of him is learning wisdom and knowledge. And this is what wisdom says. I wouldn't be expecting too much from him if I were you. If that be the case. If you listen to foolishness all the time. 27. When your fear cometh as desolation. As a tempest. And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish uh, cometh upon you, 28, then shall they call upon me. They're going, they're going to really start, and you, and you know you've seen it. Something happens. Oh, God, pray. Oh, this is the time to seek God. No, it, the time to seek God was way back when you came out the gate. His advice. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Too late for wisdom then. You've already got your foot in it. Okay? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Which is, again, what? The beginning of all knowledge. Wisdom. 30. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Do you think God doesn't reprove people? When you start down the wrong path, he'll jar your little old body. He'll send you all kinds of messages, and some just keep going, won't listen. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. Now this word way is the same word as journey. Derek, same word. The way, the path is the journey. So he says, I'm going to let you do your own journey without me and without wisdom. And be filled with their own devices. If that's what you want, Almighty God will give it to you. All you want. 32, for the turning away of the simple shall slay them. In other words, when they watch what some simple person does, that's a person. Simple in the Hebrew here is a person operating void of common sense. Okay? So if you want to follow someone like that, and... Um, the simple shall slay them. It'll lead you astray. It'll kill you. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Never, when you see a fool prosper, don't take it as an example. 
run the other way. When you know that it is a fool that is prospering, he's going to fall. And make sure that none of it breaks off on you. Well, I saw this old boy really making easy money over here. Danger. Let that sign come up. Hey, get it in your head and let it settle good. There are no free rides in life. I'll say it again. There are no free lunches or rides in life. Somebody's got to pay. Uh, why do I say that? Well, there's graciousness of Christians. They feed people. I, that's not what I'm talking about. When it comes to prosperity, there are no free rides. Common sense, knowledge, and wisdom of God's prophecy of what tomorrow brings, that's not operating like a fool. That's getting ahead while the sun's shining by using wisdom. But there's nothing free. Don't, someone will say, if you'll stick $1,000 in our off, offshore bank, then you can write checks on whatever you want to. And most people are wise enough to know when something goes over the horizon, it's out of sight, right? Well, I can't see it. You got it. It's gone, honey. Long gone. Okay, there are no free lunches. Remember that. That's the, that's the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes. Never involve yourself in a pyramid. Any type of selling, buying, or something that has to do with the pyramid. You may be in on the bottom floor. And it may go good for a while, but pretty soon people are going to be hurt. And guess who's going to be blamed? Okay? It's going to topple. No free rides. Verse 33. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. You don't have to worry about getting hurt if you'll do it wisely in your journey. What is this journey of life? What is life? Life is the spirit, the intellect of your soul, and soul is yourself. Where did it come from? It came from the Father. Well, what was it doing with him? I don't know. That's a big question mark. Jeremiah was doing enough there that God chose him as a prophet. He says, I know what kind of stuff you are. I can trust you. And many times in our lives, it's the same way. God knows you very well. So the journey began long ago. This is just a short period of brevity here in flesh. Well, it's been 6,000 years. No, no, it hasn't. Most people don't live over 100. You know, some of us don't even get that far. Some of us are glad, well, whatever. And, but... Back in many years ago, yes, they had a little longevity, but we don't get to spend that much time in the flesh. So it's not, for an individual, the journey is not that long in the flesh. It's just a flick. Just a flick of time in God's time plan. So the journey is interesting and you can enjoy it. You can have fun and have peace of mind but you got to be able to read the road map that takes you on the way and you've got to use wisdom well what is wisdom reverencing God that's the beginning if you reverence him you're going to study his word and take his advice and he's going to love you so much and as much as he controls everything he's just going to pour blessings out on you right and left all you can handle but he will never never give you more than you can take care of so check your old bank account out and take stock okay he knows what he can trust you with uh, that that hurts feelings and causes people to get anxious sometimes when you say that but let's face it you know and, and that is no standard for how God loves you period okay know that but it does pay to use wisdom okay it really does. And I must say, I really feel sorry for the young people in this generation that have to get a start 
Do you know they have to pay as much for an automobile as I had to pay for my first farm? And they pay a lot more than I pay for my first, paid for my first house. You know, I, I feel sorry for them, but hey, you can cut it. You can do it. And God will bless you if you do it His way. Um, okay. Let's skip on down to chapter 2. Let's pick it up about verse 6, if we may. We're going to spend a little bit of time here in Proverbs on the way, which is to say the journey. Verse 6 of chapter 2, For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Well, I wish he would talk to me. Friend, he is from his word. That's the way he talks to you in large part. He wrote this letter to you. So listen. 7. He layeth up sound, I repeat, sound wisdom for the righteous. That's those that try to do right. You're not going to succeed 100%. But trying, he marks as perfect. All right? When you make a stab at it, when you try. He is, listen to this carefully, he is a buckler to them that walk, I repeat, walk, that's your journey, uprightly. Do you know what a buckler is? It's a shield. In other words, he will shield you. Boy, I would hate to walk in this generation without a shield. I really would. Why would you want to walk in this life when you've got so many sharpshooters standing by to take shots at you, economically, spiritually, any way you want to slice it, without God's shield. It's dangerous when he's there to do it for you if you open in your journey. Verse 8, he keepeth the paths, there again, that's the way, same word basically, of judgment, and preserveth the way, that's that word journey again in the Hebrew, of his saints. Now what did that say? He preserves your path for those that are set aside. Saints doesn't mean somebody that's necessarily perfect, but somebody that's trying. Somebody that wants to be on that path. And I'm going to tell you what, when you've got God knocking the hedges down where you can walk without getting in the briars, life's a bunch better. It really is. Or, get out in, go out in some old blackberry thicket out here and try to walk through. You know? There's only one time when running through a blackberry thicket is, is, um, is good, and that's when a John Deere tractor is just turned over and is about to fall on you or a mad bull is chasing you. All right? Then go right on through, and you'll look a mess. When you come. He'll take care of those things for you, though. What I'm saying, he, and if you don't believe this, you're not a believer. He protects your path in life. He knows what tomorrow brings, therefore he's in a position where he can, where that he can set it for you. If you use this, that is to say the domicile of what's in here, your brain whereby lies your spirit, which is the intellect of your soul, and gain wisdom from him. Okay? Uh, he will do that for you. He protects the called ones. That's why he says to Satan, don't touch mine anointed. And he meant it. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity. That word equity is a wonderful word. Apply it to your life. And when you're making your plans, make sure that it's a part of it. Every good path. This word path here is a little bit different. It's more like a track. And, and you know, a track is something that you have a hard time getting off of, right? If you're a railroad wheel and you're rolling down that sucker, let's hope you don't get off of it. It's going to take you where he leads you. It's a track, a given path. And he'll help you stay on it in that sense. That's what the Hebrew word means, ten. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is 
uh, pleasant unto thy soul. That means that you enjoy gaining knowledge. How many of you ever wonder why? I just love to study God's word. It's so rewarding. That's the reason it's feeding you. It's, it's wising you up. It's making you wiser than Satan. And that's what it takes. Discretion. Discretion can be translated common sense or horse sense. Either one. Common sense shall preserve thee. Understanding shall keep thee. Twelve. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man, from the man that speaketh froward things, that speaks nonsense, trouble, things that are not true, gives advice that's not worth a plug nickel. It's like somebody going on the street corner down here where the spitters and whittlers whittle all day because they're too dang lazy to go to work, and they got advice for you, and they don't charge. But what's it worth? Whittling? Well, that's about all it's worth. Go to the most successful person in whatever it is you know you're going to do and ask advice of them. And always ask advice of your father. Uh, verse 13. Who leave the paths of uprighteousness to walk in the ways of darkness? Do you know whose ways those are? Satan's. Boy, he'll get you. All you got to do is get on, go on, get off out in there. Wait in, friend. 14. Who rejoice to do evil and delight in the frowardness, the boldness, if you would, of the wicked. 15. Whose ways, and there's that word journey again, whose ways are crooked and they uh, froward in their paths. They're they're perverse in their path. They get into perversion. 16. To deliver thee from the strange woman. The word is foreign. Who is it? Mystery Babylon. Prophetically, it is Mystery Babylon. Even from the stranger which flattereth with her words. Would you come to our church tonight? We're having an ice cream social to get acquainted. <laughs> To get our wings ready for a flyaway, by and by, sweeten the pie. We have the most loving community in church. Yes, come today, won't you? Yep. She'll talk to you, she'll whisper in your ear to pull you away from this word. Be careful, friend, for mystery Babylon is simply confusion of religion, and God is not the author of confusion but of peace. See that you use common sense. God has work for you to do. He's not going to pamper you like some wallflower. That isn't what he's got you for. He's got things for you to do. They'll always flatter you. When somebody comes up and starts flattering you, you better, you better grab your pocketbook or something. You know, because that's the way Satan, that's his method of operation. 17, which forsaketh the guide of her youth and forgetteth the covenant of her God. This is the covenant. Stick with it. For her house inclineth unto death and her paths unto the death. In other words, it's one slippery slope to hell. All right? If, that, if you mess around with, that, with untruths, Rather than sticking with God's word because it may sound good or it may be interesting or isn't that exciting? You're sliding, friend. Joy and excitement comes from keeping ahead of deception and confusion and staying solid on the rock rather than slipping into deception or things that tingle the ears. 19. None that go unto her return again. Neither take they hold of the paths, there's that word again, of what? Life, eternal life. Now Christ paid an awesome price that this has kind of changed. They can return under certain circumstances, and that's part of your work. That thou mightest walk, that journey, in the way of good men, and keep the paths, your journey, of the righteous. It's that simple. Again, you're not going to be perfect. 
I don't know, if one of you turned out to be absolutely perfect, I'm afraid the rest of us might not even be able to stand you. We'd be proud of you. But I'm sure you wouldn't have too many invitations to come visit. That's terrible, isn't it? But it's true. None of us are perfect, is what I'm saying. We had one we could invite, and that was Jesus Christ. He was perfect. Why do I say that? I don't want you to be disappointed when things go wrong with me teaching, stay on the right path and you won't have any problems. We all slip. And you're going to stump your old toe occasionally. Don't, don't worry, it won't kill you. You'll get well. It'll heal up. Just do better, all right? And remember where that stump was. Don't go that way anymore, okay? 21. For the upright shall dwell in the land, and the perfect shall remain in it. In him we are. 22. For the wicked shall be cut off from the earth, and the transgressors shall be rooted out of it. Ultimately, when Babylon reigns, when the Antichrist appears, the millennium happens, we save all we can, then it's true. The lake of fire is prepared, and in it they go. So, you don't want any part of that. Your journey through this earth in the flesh is very short. Take advantage of it. You can do a lot of good while you're here. And I'm going to tell you something. You'll enjoy doing the good a lot more than you will enjoy doing the bad. You will enjoy helping people a lot more than you will enjoy hurting people. That's just the way God created us. So watch the journey. Watch the path. And um, do make the best of it. The choice is yours. Don't try to blame it on somebody else. Okay, skip over with me to the fourth chapter. Pick it up with the seventh verse here in this proverb. And the seventh verse reads, Wisdom is the principal thing. You got that? Let it settle in real good. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Get some common sense along with it. Book learning and wisdom will do you a lot of good. But until you've got a little practical experience, you don't have much common sense in relationship to it. Like sending somebody to college to learn how to brand or brame a bull. And then taking from the books out to the corral and say, go to it. You know, uh, common sense is, is where true wisdom meets the road. All right, don't forget that. Exalt her, and she shall promote thee. Listen to it. Do you want to be promoted? She shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou doest embrace her. When thou dost embrace her. Do embrace her. Love her. Love wisdom. Love understanding. Love common sense. And be proud that you um, possess her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O oh my son, there's no gender in this, it's all of you, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way. That's the journey. Same word, journey, of wisdom. I have led thee. Does he lead you? I have led thee in right paths. He does that. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straighted, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. I don't care how, in the Hebrew it says a little more, I don't care how rough the hedges are, he'll, he'll fix it for you, okay? He'll take care of it. One more verse, take fast hold of instruction. That's, never be afraid to receive instruction. Weigh it, sometimes you'll have to discard it. I'm talking about from man. But it doesn't hurt to listen. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Wisdom, knowledge, common sense. That is your life. Why? From it comes peace of mind, loving your father, respecting him, and having his protection. Without his protection... You're going to hurt. 
you're going to have a heap of hurt. And do you know something? He wants to help you. He wants to lead you. That's why he sent you this letter. Now, sometimes man is really intelligent, and I like the way God teaches, because if you enjoy nature, how many of you have, have ever gone out in the summer to an ant hill and just watched them a little bit, watched their trail, you know? And then look at them little critters, okay? Well, you learn something that way. And God has a way of teaching us that if you can't get it one way, he's going to give it to you another, okay? So, he teaches us within that. So, let's go over to the sixth chapter of this book. And here he's going to use a little old insect on us called the ant, okay? Chapter 6 of Proverbs, verse 6. Go, if you don't understand any of the rest of this, go to the ant. And that don't mean Aunt Sophie either. That means a little ant out there in the, in the hole in the ground. Thou sluggard. Now that's not being called a nice name there. Consider her ways. Ways is journey. Consider her journey. And be wise. In other words, learn a little sense. Now the word sluggard is um, it means indolent and um, that's not a word we use all that often so let me explain indolent it's somebody that is not anxious to work all right have you ever known anybody like that I mean you know they're lazy in other words okay I'll go to the literal have you ever seen an old slug mm -hmm. he doesn't hurry to work all right well, a lazy person, uh, I'll get around to that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, honey, just leave it there. I'll do it tomorrow. And that's mine, okay? Don't nobody else claim that. I'll fix it tomorrow. He said, you lazy people, go take a look at the ant. And be wise when you look at her. Verse uh, 7. Which having no guide, she doesn't have a preacher, teacher, prophet, letter from God. The ant doesn't. Has no guide. Overseer or ruler. She doesn't have a set of laws uh, that we know about. She's got them, but they're her own. Like we do, to keep her straight, you know. In other words, don't speed and you won't go to jail. Don't steal and you won't go to jail. Those are laws to keep you out of jail, keep you out of trouble. Well, she doesn't have any of those, okay? Uh, eight, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. In other words, there's only one time you can do it, and that's when the time is ripe, you know? She hustles, hustles, hustles. I mean, a little old aunt, uh, probably it would have been interesting if I would have looked up how many times they can carry more than their own weight, but... You all know that without me telling you anyway. You're so sharp. But um, let's see. Um, little ant can carry a bale of hay. No, 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 no. No, that's not the way the saying goes, all right? I've, but they can carry a lot, okay? And, and they work hard at it. What is God telling you? Work. Plan. Hustle. All right? And you know what? He'll trust you with more. Nine. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? There's that one not anxious to rush to work. When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Question. Some people never do. All right. They got, with modern conveniences, I mean, when you've got a comfortable couch and a remote control, who needs to? You know, you just push the thumb. Makes it easy to be a sluggard in this generation. Um, ten, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty, that means your need, come as one that travaileth. Now, 
Now, you men wouldn't understand this word travaileth. This means in labor, pains. Now, your wife can tell you about pain in travailing. That's what, that's what poverty can do to you if you're lazy. And thy want as an armed man, it will, your want will attack like an armed man. So we can learn a lot about our journey by watching nature. Don't be the grasshopper or you end up like the grasshopper. The grasshopper makes no provisions for winter food and guess what happens to it? You know, it dies. It's out of here. The ant, that ant survives the winter and hustles out to work. I want to make sure there's, you know, the, the ant, a large part of the winter gets to rest. Think about it. You don't have to worry about having plenty of rest and sleep time. And if you keep this the busiest than this, if you keep your mind working faster than your hands, you'll get a lot more done, okay? Um, I think that needs no explanation. We'll just let that pass there. Okay. I want to go over to Job for a minute. Back to Job. Back right before Psalms in between there. In the 38th chapter... You all know that Job, up till 38 chapters, and Job meaning persecuted, he listened to three knuckleheads go on and on and on and give him advice on traveling the road. And all, most of it bum, most of it nonsense. And many people preach sermons from the book of Job when these idiots were talking and say, it's written, all right? And they brand themselves when they do. Finally, finally, after, this is the lesson from Job. After 38 chapters of yakety, yakety, yakety of men, God shows up. And what does he say? Chapter 38, then verse 1, Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Who are these idiots you're listening to, Job? And this is what Job's problem was coming out the gate. Don't let it be yours. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. In other words, you get up from there and you stand up and you act like a man. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Well, Job couldn't answer that. I couldn't and you couldn't. God said, I could do that. What about you, Sonny? Who hath laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Who made the road, Job? Who set that straight course? Well, I hope you know, God did. It sure wasn't Job, and it sure wasn't those three knuckleheads he had been listening to. Taking him down, 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 and every one of them giving him... Great advice. God says, they didn't have no sense, Job. Verse 6. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened, or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Who started all this, Job? Who made God? Where was God? Where did God come from? Who made this earth? Who made that universe? Seven. When the morning stars, listen closely for me, sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. When was that? It was the first earth age. That's when the journey began. If you want to make a deeper study of it, I could go on and on. I'm not going to. But we're talking about when God created all the people, angels, souls, stars, uh, so, whatever you want to call them, it was you. And they sang with joy. Why? They were happy. This was before Satan's rebellion. And he's saying to Job, where were you? Well, Job should have been able to answer that and probably could have. I was there, God. But he couldn't remember it. Why? 
Because we're locked into these flesh bodies. Eight. Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth as if it had issued out of the womb? Who made it safe where it wouldn't wash you away? Who put the shoreline? When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, and the thick darkness, a swaddling band uh, for it. Were you there when I created the firmament, the rain? And break up for it my decreed place, and set bars and doors. I set boundaries, I set roads, I set ways. And it was all measured. Who could measure the sun's orbit, the earth's orbit? And all the planets. God did. He knows exactly where they are, where they're going to cross, and what's going to happen to them. Because he set the journey. Now who are you going to trust? Those three idiots that were giving advice, yakety, yakety, yak, or your father. I remind you again, the beginning of knowledge is to reverence Almighty God, our Father, your Father. There's only one to listen to him rather than ratchet jaws who think they know the path, who think they have wisdom if it be the ways of the world. Okay? Um, so, or who shut up the sea, set the bounds to down... Let's skip on down, if we may, verse 11. And said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no father, and here shall thou proud waves be stayed. Waves are, is a Hebraism that means proudness because of white caps, okay? Like you really think you're some big wave, but when the wind quits blowing, what happens to the white cap? It's gone, okay? That's what proud, pride, pride will do to you. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days and caused the day spring to know his place? Hey, Job, you've listened to these three idiots. Tell me if you can, have you caused the day, have you caused the sun to come up this morning? Now that's God getting kind of down where it hurts, isn't it? What if he said that to you? Did you cause the sun to come up this morning? That would kind of put you in your place, would it not? Think about it, all right? We all need that occasionally that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it. Last verses of Hebrews chapter 12, he's going to do it again, and he will. It is turned as clay to be the seal, and they stand as a garment. I'm going to have to work on that just a little bit for you. He took the clay and he made your body, and it fits you like a garment, and placed one of those souls in it. Could you do that? I don't think so. Gave it fingerprints here, and none of ours are ever the same. Well, what are they for? Well, what are treads on a tire for? For traction. Well, what did he put on the back? There's little hairs there. Yeah, that's so... Why does he put whiskers on a cat's face? So if it gets in a close place, it can get out. Or if something comes close to mashing your fingers, you jerk it back because the little old nerve goes up, you know, and says, Action! Cameras roll! Okay? And you move. He's great. You understand? He did all that for you. Showing you the way. Okay? He created the flesh body. No man, no, not those other three could do that, certainly. Okay, then skip on with me for the sake of time in this 38th chapter, down to verse 24. By what way, that's path, there's that word journey again, is the light parted which scattereth the east wind upon the earth. That means that causes it to heat up, you know. Who hath divided a water course for the overflowing of the waters? Or a way for the lightning to, or th of thunder? That way means a path. Have you ever provided the way for lightning? Or does it kind of just go wherever it wants to as far as you're concerned? I mean, think about it a minute. These are, he's, God is serious about this. He knows. 
If your father knows the ways of the planets and the ways of the lightning, don't you think he can help you on your little old path? Think about it. Or the thunder, 26, to cause it to rain on the earth where no man is or the wilderness wherein there is no man. No man is necessary is what God is saying. I could get along without you if I wanted to. To satisfy the desolate and waste ground and to cause the bud of the tender herb to spring forth. He says, I dress up and keep my lawn, the wilderness that people never go to, looking pretty nice. All right? I water it, attend for it. Hath the rain a father? Or who hath begotten the drops of dew? Tell me that. Look at one. One of the most purest waters there is on earth. Look at a drop of that dew. Out of whose womb came the ice or the hoary frost of the heaven? Who hath gendered it? Man sure didn't. The waters are hid as with a stone, and the face of the deep is frozen. Canst thou bind the sweet influence of Pleiades? Pleiades? Or loose the bands of Orion? He said, I know exactly where they are. I can loose that big belt buckle. That's the three stars, you know. I make their paths. I make their ways. Can you trust me with yours? That's what God is saying in a sense. Boy, that's, a, that's an humbling thought, beloved. When he makes these promises, I will Shield your path, your journey, your way. You're journeying through this life. Don't fail to have the shield in front of you. Don't fail to have him protecting you. Now, let's, uh, we, we've, we've been over here in the Old Testament. Let's go one more place on the way out. Just two little verses in Isaiah. I don't ever want you to forget these two little verses. If you ever have any doubts about Everything we've covered here, remember Isaiah chapter 48. And I'm going to read verses 16 and 17. And please remember them. Make a note of them if you have weak moments. Come ye near unto me. That's talking to you, to the Father. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. When was that beginning? Think about it, beloved, what he's saying to you. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit hath sent me. That's to say through the prophet Isaiah. Now listen carefully. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer. Don't, don't read over these. He is your kinsman Redeemer. That's a legal term. Meaning he's the closest relative you've got and it is his right to buy you out of hell if he wants to. That's kinsman, redeemer. The Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God which teacheth, teacheth thee to profit. To do what? To profit. Which leadeth thee by the way, journey path he does what he leads thee by the derecha the path the journey that thou shouldest go do you trust him he sent you the letter he gave you all kinds of advice and he reasons with you to use common sense and don't be too quick to listen to this man or any other man without going back to his loving word and check it out. Find it. He will talk to you because he leads you, not man. Man can't do anything for you. Man's weak like you are. And we all stumble. I don't care who you are, you get out in the rough edge of the path and if there's a rock there, especially if you've got big feet, you're probably going to hit it, you know. But you'll heal. But God will always lead you. I, I want to stress the word lead. He knows if you try where to take you. 
and he will. New Testament, 8th chapter of Mark. Here, let's pick it up in verse 2 because you're all familiar with it and could quote it to me verbatim probably. Jesus talking when the people have been out in the wilderness three whole days. Think about that. What happens to you in three days if you haven't been up to the table? Okay, think about it. I have compassion, Jesus says, in Mark 8, verse 2, because I have compassion on the multitude, all these people, because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. Verse 3, And if I send them away fasting to their own houses, they will faint by the way. Now do I have to tell you? What is the way? It's the path. It's the journey. In the Greek, it is hodas. H-O-D-O-S. Emphasis on the S. Hodas. Same thing. Well-worn path journey. If I, they will faint by the way, for divers of them come from far. What is Jesus telling you there? He never by his own compassion wants anyone to take this journey or any other journey without being fed. And you should be fed. And figuratively speaking and spiritually speaking, what are we talking about? Fed by his word so that you have the strength, the knowledge, the wisdom, the common sense to make the trip, to make the journey and make it in good shape and not be one of these oh, God the whole world turned on me I just can't do nothing without it just everybody's picking on me hey God wants can do type people because he will feed you he will give you the knowledge he will give you the understanding that you can stand up and be a man woman child of God and we cut our own wake because he defends our path. He is our shield and he is all power of the world. He can do things men can't even begin to comprehend such as the Pleiades, the stars, the belt buckle of the old giant. Hey, I'm going to tell, I'm going to speak real plain. The reason God can unloosen that belt because we're going to take the same giant David slew, the, the old dragon, and we're going to undo his belt and drop his britches. All right? He's going to get what he's got coming to him. And guess who's going to do it? God's people, because they are can-do type people. Friends, we take names and kick dragon because he gives us the power. He gives us the strength. You can't be a poor me baby and serve God at your utmost, at your best. Oh, 13th chapter, real quickly in closing. 13th chapter of the same book of Mark. Try to hold these together so we don't have to funnel pages so much. Verse 34 of this 13th chapter. You want to know what it's like? And you want to know what he expects of you? You all remember this 13th chapter. It tells of when you'll be delivered up before the Antichrist and you're not to premeditate what you will say beforehand because he will speak through you. That's when you're taking dragon names. But this is the close of that Sermon on the Mount, uh, part, that part. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey. It's like he's on a journey, all right? Same subject. Who left his house and gave authority, gave what? Gave a key? Uh-uh. Gave uh, um, provisions? Uh-uh. Authority. Gave authority to his servants and to every man his work. No gender there. I said... Did it say pray? Well, if your work is prayer, if you're a prayer horse, yep, that's talking to you. But your work might be something else. But it is work. And that's your righteous acts. It's not wishful thinking. It's not lazy bumming it. It's work for him that he gives you. And commandeth the porter to watch. 
Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning. Nobody knows the instant, in other words, but you know the season. Lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. He doesn't like that. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Watch. Watch how? By discerning the seasons from his word, his message. Don't listen to three knuckleheads or five knuckleheads or ten or one. Like Job had. Poor man went through 38 chapters of misery, boils, and everything. And he just got, I don't know what in the world, I still love God, but why? Authority, use it. I don't know why Christians are afraid to use authority. But it would seem they are. Don't be. Now, we've talked about the Hebrew derek, and we've talked about the Greek hados, the way. The path. Tell me this. What is written in John 14, 6? What did Christ tell you there? All of you look at me. Don't, don't turn there. 14, 6. You can make a note. But you all remember it when I start quoting it if you can't. Christ said, I am the way. The truth. And the life. John 14, 6. Don't ever forget it. What path do I take? I am the way. Same word. Journey. He is your journey. He is your path. He is the truth. His gospel that gives you wisdom and knowledge. And from that, the life. And my friend, there is no other life. Because after this dispensation and the one following the seventh, at the eight, there will be no more life except those that have earned it. But there will be the lake of fire for those that slip. What is your work? Well, if we had covered Mark 13, you would have got a large piece of it. That's the main recap of this dispensation. Is God's elect being delivered up before the spurious Messiah. Many of you say, well, I just want to do something. Hang around. Stick around. You'll have something to do plenty. Plant seeds. Study his word. Be prepared. But never forget. I am the way. If you wonder about the path and the journey in life, then life is in him and he is in you. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for the written word. We thank thee, Father, for the journey. The journey of proof, Father, knowing and separating those that do not belong and those that do, Father, in the, thy almighty kingdom, eternal, Father. Give us the knowledge and wisdom, Father, and understanding and the practice of common sense that you may use us, for indeed it is a pleasure serving thee. We ask it in Yeshua, Jesus' precious name. Amen.